Good morning, Mega Podlings. Crazy Joe here, and I saw the movie Overlord. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the trailers. It opened this past week, and uh, it's it's a World War II like Nazi monster movie. I guess that's the best way to describe it. It's from Bad Robot. It's produced by J.J. Abrams, uh, the the director. I, I should have his name in front of me. I don't. I'm sorry. J.J. Uh, Abrams did not direct it, but he produced it. And uh, it's been it, looking interesting. I saw the previews. I thought, hey, that looks kind of cool. Not tracking well. Not tracking well. It is not going to be a hit this weekend. I'm sure The Grinch is going to be the number one movie in America this year. I, I This week. I would be certain that The Grinch is going to be number one in theaters this weekend. And I haven't checked the box office tracking at all. For, for the weekend, but I know going into the weekend, Overlord was really not tracking high at all. So it's not going to be a hit, but I want to report in and say it's a fun movie. It's really fun. It's It, it kind of had a From Dusk Till Dawn vibe about it. If you've seen From Dusk Till Dawn, uh, story-wise, plot-wise, it's nothing like From Dusk Till Dawn. Don't don't think that you're going into a movie that's going to be like From Dusk Till Dawn. It's not. I'm talking about in structure. Because if you'll remember in From Dusk Till Dawn, uh, it's a crime thriller. It, it, it's a crime uh, story. The, these two brothers on the run uh, trying to get away from the police, trying to get into Mexico. And for a good 45 minutes to an hour, there's nothing supernatural about this movie. It is a It is a crime film. Then in about 45 minutes to an hour, boom, a vampire shows up. And you're like, whoa, we're in a vampire movie now. Which I think is kind of a, a cool approach because that's how it really would be. If you were in a, in a vampire movie, that's how it would be. All the characters in a vampire movie don't know they're in a vampire movie until the vampire shows up, right? Like these are all people who live in a real world. They go to work. They go to school. They've got normal problems. They have nothing to do with the supernatural. And then one day, boom, there's a vampire there. And they're like, oh, crap, that's a vampire. So that approach of showing the very, very, very real world these people live in before you introduce the supernatural. Uh, I'd never had seen that before from Dust Till Dawn. I haven't seen it much since. But, but that's kind of the approach structurally that Overlord takes. Because for a good long time, you're just watching a World War II movie. It's just a World War II movie. There's nothing weird about it. And then it's like, oh, by the way, here's this sci-fi horror element sprinkled in that's going to show up about an hour into the movie. Aha, you didn't see that coming, did you? Except we did see it coming because it's in the trailer. But if you hadn't seen the trailer, you wouldn't have seen that coming. And these characters, they certainly didn't see it coming. So I, I thought it was pretty neat. It's not a movie that's going to change your life. It's not the best thing in theaters right now. But it's good. It's good. It's solid. It's fun. If you have interest in it, I say get out there quickly. Because there's a lot of good stuff out right now. And I don't think Overlord is going to be a big hit at the box office. So it's probably not going to be out long. But I am definitely recommending it. You know, it just occurred to me... Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel trademarked the thumbs up, thumbs down. So I cannot do that. I can't come in and say, you know, thumbs up. Because that, uh, that is a trademark of Roger Ebert and uh, Gene Siskel. And their families hold that trademark. But I was thinking I should probably come up with my own, my own, like, uh, thing. I don't know what what that is, but... Actually, I guess I already have it. I guess if we go to the podcast, it would be a high five. Like I said, I'm giving this movie a high five. This movie gets a high five from Crazy Joe. So high five to Overlord. It's worth checking out. It's fun. And Joey Baseball, if you're watching, I want to apologize that I didn't record at the theater. Uh, it was raining so hard that night. I, I thought about uh, recording outside the theater as, as I've been doing as per your request. But uh, it just was raining so hard that night that I was like, I'm not going to shoot out here. I'm going to, for one thing, I could damage my camera holding it out in the, uh, 
in the pouring rain because it was coming down hard. Like it wasn't even just raining. I mean, it was like torrential downpour raining when I got to the theater. So I didn't shoot outside the theater this time. I apologize for that. But that's that's the reason why I didn't. Also, and, and you know, comment down below. Tell me what you think. Is it getting tiresome me shooting at the theater? Because I don't feel like I'm doing much at the theater. I feel like I'm getting an establishing shot. Hey, I'm at the theater. Going to see this movie. Do you want to keep seeing that? Because I'll keep doing it if you want to see it. But I, I do fear it might be getting uh, overdone, tiresome. You let me know. I'm happy to hear what, what you guys think. So that's all we got. Keep wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas with the plastic feet. Keep wearing those pajamas. Tell everyone you need. Keep wearing those pajamas with the back door flap. Keep wearing those pajamas. Don't open it to trap. Oh, it's a trap. Some people call them bitches. Some people call them jammies. They can come embroidered with big money and no whammies. They can have a hundred tiny commander and damas. But no matter how they look, just keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas And now we're having fun Keep wearing those pajamas And now the song is done